Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Pretty stacked pack. Strong rare in quasi duplicate. Strong uncommon in price of fame. And a strong common too in the form of artful takedown. So lots of the mirror flavored cards here. But the uh, pick really is between Duplicate and Price of Fame. Price of Fame, just a better version of Artful Takedown in a single color, so no reason to not take it over Artful Takedown. So strong removal spell or pretty strong rare, giving us a nice bit of value to take over the late game. I think uh, Duplicate probably gets the nod here. All right, let's take the Duplicates. And best card in the pack here... Probably District Guide. Of course, uh, Simic, not a supported guild yet. What else is there? Centipede, a reasonable 3-drop for Demir. Informant, reasonable blue 3-drop in a more controlling deck. There's also Demir Guildgate for fixing. And that's about it. District Guide's pretty powerful, but not uh, the most synergistic with our uh, first pick, whereas Demir Informant still a, a fine three drop here, and goes pretty well with our first pick. So when it's close, taking a card that's on color makes sense. Pretty straightforward. We've got a nice discovery dispersal for our deck that's shaping up to be Demir, but still totally fine in an Is it deck as well if we're just blue, and nothing really close. So let's take it. All right, well, the Demir cards are flowing, so no reason not to take them. Pretty stacked pack here. Sabotage, nice counter spell. Capture Sphere, nice removal spell. Whisper Agent, nice all-around creature. And Notion Rain, nice card draw. Don't think it's the Notion Rain for multiple reasons. Notion Rains is kind of bad in multiples, since you can only cast so many of them before you're dead. And you can usually get them later, plus it's also a Demir card, whereas we could still easily end up in Izzet. Whisper Agent and Sabotage are uh, both pretty close, and then there's Capture Sphere as removal. And we don't have many removal spells yet. But overall Capture Sphere, not the most exciting card. So I could see taking Sabotage or Whisper Agent over it. But definitely a close pick. Surveil Synergy can also be a nice payoff card, of course if we end up with those uh, Demir cards. So sure, why not? All right. So now we've got our first incentive to maybe move into red with Commander Storm, but there's also a Disdainful Stroke, which is totally serviceable as a nice two mana counter spell in pretty much any blue deck. So we could just... Uh, Stay the course, take the Zainful Stroke, and still be flexible if we want to be Demir or Izzet. Or we could take the Commander Storm and commit a bit more heavily towards uh, Izzet. I think uh, still taking the Stroke is fine here. Commander Storm is a fine card, but it's not necessarily a reason to switch. Alright, so now we're not seeing any great red cards. Fire Urchin's playable if you need a 2-drop to block with, but you're not excited about it. Centipede, on the other hand, is a more exciting creature in terms of filler. At least uh, provides a bit of value when it dies. So we'll take it also. Our cards are shaping up to synergize a bit better in Demir than in Izzet. All right, that's a nice late capture sphere. Definitely taking it here. So blue's pretty wide open. And uh, we're still quite flexible. Could still be Demir, could still be Izzet and got a lot of good blue cards, so good place to be in. There's a Passwell Adept, usually happy to have one of these available in my main deck or sideboard. Veil Shades okay, if you need a mana sink and close out the game. Could take another Centipede, there's a Mesmerist too as a 2-drop, but I think if we're taking a 2-drop this deck is shaping up to be more defensive, interested in uh, playing the late game, so would rather have the Adept over the Mesmerist. In the uh, aggressive Izzet decks, Mesmerist can be quite strong though. So let's just take the blue card. Alright, got the same pick. Now I'm 
leaning towards taking the Veil Shade just to diversify a little bit. Adapt not necessarily great in multiples, so I doubt we would play a second one, even if we take it here, so let's take a Veil Shade. Alright, got a centipede on the wheel, nothing else. And interesting pick here, sometimes Enhanced Surveillance makes a deck if you have a ton of Surveil, or if you're worried about decking yourself and you don't have Devious Cover-Up as a counterspell to shuffle cards back into your deck. Probably not going to need a second Adapt, so I think it makes sense to take it here, even though we might not main deck it, and we wield Notion Rain perfect. So this is coming together nicely. Alright, so the first pack went pretty well. Lots of good playables. Demir seems to be quite open. And, uh, I mean, if we open a great red card like a niv Mizzet, we can still easily move into Izzet and not be too disappointed. So, good spot to be in. <laughs> well, you gotta call your shots. And there we go. Niv Mizzet, rewarded. Still early enough that we can switch into Izzet here. So definitely gonna take it, and then hope to wheel Field, Direct Currents, Whisper Agent, cover up, maybe even the Wall of Mist. So let's take it. This is now an Izzet deck. Probably don't need this Enhanced Surveillance now. Alright, got our nice typical pack with Ocran Assassin, Status Statue and Discovery. Seen this one a few times before. So we could take another Discovery, of course, now that we're in Izzet and not Dimir. It does get a little bit worse, since it's just a cantrip now instead of a potential bounce effect. Could take another Informant, a reasonable blocker, could take a Crab, reasonable blocker, could take Command Storm. A nice removal spell, I think this makes sense now that we're moved into Izzet. And we don't have much at 5 mana yet. Alright, well, perfect. There's a Beacon Bolt with enough instants and sorceries. It's just a super powerful removal spell that we can cast twice. There is also Watcher in the Mist, which is a very strong card too. But now that we're committed to Izzet, I think taking Beacon Bolt is worth it. Inescapable Blaze can also be okay, especially with a few Goblin Electromancers making it cheaper. But let's take our Beacon Bolts while we can. Alright, well, Radical Idea and Devious Cover-Up are the picks here. Radical Idea, nice cantrip if we end up with a few payoff cards, like uh, Murmuring Mystic, of course, would be the, the best one. But niv Mizzet himself rewards you for casting a few instants afterwards. And then there's Devious Cover-Up as a, a decent counterspell. Would definitely like to have one or two of those. But I'm kind of liking the Radical Idea here. Also have a bit of synergy with our Surveil. If we put it in the graveyard, we can still cast it. The is a deck we're building is looking to be somewhat more controlling. So we're not really interested in Cosmotronic Wave, even though it could be a good sideboard card against one toughness creatures. Hellkite Whelp could be a reasonable 5 drop for our deck. Sonic Assault, even though we're not the aggressive is a deck still sometimes finds its way into the main deck of a more controlling Izzet deck, just because it is a valuable effect to have in a late game. You can tap down the opponent's largest creature for two turns in a row while dealing a bit of damage, which can still be fine in a more mid-rangey or controlling Izzet deck. And then there's also Izzet Locket, which now with niv Mizzet also gets a bit better as a way to fix our mana and ramp, but it's probably still the Hellkite Whelp here. Alright, now we can take our Devious Cover-Up. There's also Fire Urchin, but we already have Double Pass while Adept at 2 mana. So that we're not too concerned with picking those up. And we already have a Demir Informant, so seems like a good time to pick up our Devious Cover-Up. Make sure we don't end up decking ourselves. Alright, well, there's a Crab. Gotta take the Crab. Nice card in this deck. Help us hold down the fort, so we can sit back behind our counter spells and removal spells. And now I don't mind taking Izzet Locket. Might actually play it in this deck. 
maximize velocity, sometimes also worthwhile, same with Gravitic Punch. But in this deck where we have niv -Mizzet, we're not too worried about trying to win the game if we just draw niv -Mizzet before we deck ourselves, we'll be okay. Alright, so we wield Devious Cover-Up, Muse Drake and Wall of Mist, as well as uh, another Izzard Locket. Don't need to take the second Izzard Locket. So it's either the second cover-up, the wall, or a Muse Drake, looking at our curve. Um, could make arguments for all of them. We're a little bit light on creatures at the moment, maybe. So that could be a reason to take the Muse Drake. Second Devious Cover-Up does combo well with the first one. I'll go with whichever one Chad decides. The Muse Drake, all right. Another crab. And now we can take either a Cosmotronic Wave for the sideboard, or Goblin or Mesmerist as an extra 2-drop. Could use more 2-drops, we're a bit light on those. So I wouldn't mind taking one of those, even though they're not the best fit in our deck. They're just creatures we can trade off early, so we can make sure we can get to the late game. And there's also a good chance we see another Cosmotronic Wave before the end of the draft. So I'll take a Goblin here. Probably not playing Halberdier. Alright, got a Sonic Assault anyway. Probably not starting it, but we'll see. Alright. And last pack. Well, had we been Demir, we would have had our typical Crawl Harpooner Thought Erasure Disinformation Campaign pack. That being said, there's also Hypothesis and Is It Guildgate? Do need to prioritize Guildgates pretty highly when we have a Nif Mizzet in our deck as a way to help us cast Nif Mizzet on turn 6. But not gonna pass up on a Hypothesis all perfect card in this deck. Ooh, wow, that's a nice Crackling Drake. There's also Capture Sphere, but yeah, not giving up on a Crackling Drake here, hoping to wheel Invert Invent or Capture Sphere. <laughs> okay then. Well, I'm not gonna say no to that. This is a, an interesting pick. Don't think we need to splash black for Artful Takedown, especially now that we have a double Crackling Drake and Niv Mizzet. Could take a third Passwell Adept as another 2-mana blocker, or we could take a Thoughtbound Phantasm, which is a decent blocker in this deck. We're probably never going to attack with it, but that's fine. We just want an early blocker to kind of throw under the bus. And we have a few ways to grow it, to make it more than a 2-2. A so that seems good enough here. The value of Radical Idea did go up in value significantly after taking those Crackling Drakes. That being said, there's also Nightville Sprite, which is still perfect in this deck. Helps us smooth out our draws, puts Jumpstart cards in the graveyard, fix our mana. Even though we would love another Radical Idea, or even another Devious Cover-Up. I don't think we can pass up on uh, a Nightville Sprite here. Alright, uh, not interested in splashing black. Invert Invent looks okay here. In terms of sorceries, we have Quasi Duplicates and Beacon Bolts, so that's already enough, and then plenty of instants to get to. And now we can take our Radical Idea. And the Cyclops is perfect too, kind of had a hole at 3 mana. So... Cyclops is a nice blocker for our deck. And could take another Is it Locket. I doubt we'll play a Leapfrog, but who knows. Let's take a quick look at our deck since we can kind of build it already. Probably don't need both crabs. This is a 2-drop. Could also be an 18 land deck, given that we have so much uh, power in the late game. But we still need to make three cuts here, probably a Passwell Adept can go. Don't know if we want to cut the Ornery Goblin, or if we just need the extra blocker. The Izzard Locket might go, the Muse Drake might go. The Halkite Whelp is also cuttable, Invert Invent is cuttable. So this is more or less how the deck will look like. Yeah, I kind of like the Locket when we're trying to cast double blue, double red cards. Don't think we'll need a second one. Gravitic Punch could also be interesting in maybe control matchups where games go along. Don't think we'll really miss out either way, don't think we'll be playing 
whichever card we take. Or we could just take the second locket, I don't know. I doubt we'll need a second one, but we'll take it. Don't need a third crab. Probably don't need a second invert event, maybe in a super grindy control matchup. There's also maximize altitude, but I doubt we'll need that. When we already have a double uh, Crackling Drake and Nemizit. Alright, I'll take the crab now. Alright, well, we even ended up with a second Devious cover-up. Not sure if we'll play it, but it's there if we want it. Alright, so pretty sweet drafts. Managed to pivot out of uh, Demir into Izzet after opening niv -Mizzet. I think this is probably a 17 land plus Locket deck, especially considering we have double Radical idea. Don't think we need 18 lands. Definitely want to balance out the red and blue a little bit. So 10-7 might be okay, 9-8, not sure. Do of course have a lot more blue, but do still need double red for Drakes and niv -Mizzet. So Invert Invent is a maybe. Uh, goblins a maybe. Although otherwise we're pretty low on two drop creatures. I think we're happy with the Phantasm. Um, I think we want the Locket. Second cover up, so maybe. Hellkite helps, so maybe. So I think these are the maybes. Definitely playing the first cover up, but this is about a second copy. So four maybes and need to make two cuts, so two get to stay. Let's do a quick poll. Devious cover up and invert get to stay. And Welp and Goblin get cut. And of course, niv it in the picture. I guess we still have to decide on the mana base. I mean, looking at the distribution, we only need double red for two Crackling Drakes and one niv -Mizzet. Of course, those are good incentives to have a lot of red. But we need double blue for cover-up and sabotage and duplicates and all the cheap cards. So I don't think we can get away with 9-8. It's probably still 10-7, and then just hope to draw the mountains in time. And we still have Izzet Locket as well. Double Drakes. Let's go. Alright, would like to be on the play. I would like to mulligan. I would like to keep. Don't have a ton of instants and sorceries for the Beacon Bolt necessarily. Do we have double Radical idea? Hmm. Phantasm's interesting. We do need some early defense here. But we're also looking for instance to enable the beacon bolt. Opponent has something for one mana. So it could be the undergrowth removal spell here. Alright, let's uh, run out the Crackling Drake. Alright, so far so good. Next turn get to keep up our Devious cover-up. Alright, opponent's ramping, so they've got a pretty unique take on the Golgari archetype maybe. Capture Sphere. Well, the Drake's not doing anything. Alright, let's untap. Nightfill Sprites, nice pickup. We even had the mana for turn 6 and have it here. Pretty impressive. Let's run out the Nightfill Sprites. The fact that Devious Cover Up Exile is also relevant, since if your opponent does have Necrotic Wound, they won't get the creature in the graveyard. Burglar Rats. I guess we'll discard the Beacon Bolt. Power up or Crackling Drake. Severed Strands. Probably worth the counter, given that we have Capture Sphere to answer a creature. And don't want to shuffle that back, I don't think. Alright, 
get to attack for three. Gonna keep the land in hand for both jumpstart and discard. And sprite plus phantasm, pretty nice too here. They did manage to put the rat in the graveyard, so necrotic wound can now give minus one, minus one. Command a storm, we'll keep that one, even though putting it in a graveyard would be nice too. And we would even attack for three with the drake right now. But I think we still have to keep it here. Just can't pass up on drawing a soldier removal spell. Of course, we will keep Necrotic Wound in mind, so we might capture Sphere before we Command Storm here. Crawl Swarm, find target for Capture Sphere. Capture Sphere, not the best when the opponent has access to cards like uh, Sever Strands. But still pretty effective here. Alright, let's get in there. Yeah, I guess Night Veil Sprite is a way for us to get a 5 5 Phantasm going. So, need one more turn and quasi duplicate, wow. Um. I mean, we kind of want to draw it, but if we put it in the graveyard now, we get to cast it on Crackling Drake right away, discarding Mountain. And we won't be able to cast it twice next turn anyway, since we don't have Quadruple Blue. So, I'm tempted to put that in the graveyard. And now we can jump start. Keeping it on top would maybe be a bit too greedy here. <laughs> Draw another crackling drake, so it's kind of like we kept it on top anyway, but got to cast it right away. So they need to kill the sprites, but they're also getting killed by the crackling drakes. Alright, they did have another Sever Strand. Well, good thing we put the Quasi Duplicate in the graveyard and copied our Drake right away. And our statue on the Nightfill Sprite, wow. And we th still put our opponent on having maybe a Necrotic Wound, never mind. I guess what they could have had on turn one was Status instead of Necrotic Wound. That could also make sense. So yeah, opponent doesn't necessarily have Necrotic Wound, they probably just had Status in hand. So let's uh, Crackling Drake first, in case we draw into a cantrip to grow the Crackling Drake. Alright, and probably fine to play one land here. Get in for three. Sadly the Phantasm stuck as a 4-4 four four for now. But if we draw our Discovery Dispersal or the three mana 1-4 that surveils, it's still gonna be able to attack or sabotage. So I've got a few ways to surveil still. Alright, Moulderhawk. Doesn't return anything. So, opponent's almost dead here. If we just command a storm to put it in the graveyard, we're hitting them for 8 in the air. And then we could also jumpstart Beacon Bolts to kill the Moulderhawk. Probably not worth it. So let's just hit them for 6. And then we can sack a lock at end of turn. And we're probably just taking six from the Mulder Hulk here. Opponent getting back Crawl Swarm. I guess we'll just Command Storm that one. Not sure which is more important. Since we're probably gonna... I mean, I guess we can Beacon Bolt it instead. It's probably better. Opponent discarding a, a Charnel Troll, so they just showed us a Charnel Troll before conceding, basically. Alright, I mean, our opponent does have double Sever Strands, so that makes the... Uh, capture Sphere a bit worse, so we might want to consider cutting that one. They also have Status Statue, which can destroy the Capture Sphere. So I'm kind of into cutting it, even though it can be a nice removal spell for their bigger green creatures. Sonic Assault can buy time against the big beefy green creatures. Hellkite Whelps an extra flyer that can ping down rats and crawl whatever swarm. Point was pretty slow to get started, so maybe playing an early Goblin can get in some damage. Don't think we need more late game. 
with invert invent. Could see Hellkite Whelp. So this looks okay. This hand seems great. So definitely leading with her Night Veil Sprite here. Discard the Radical Idea. Having these Jumpstart cards to discard to the rats feels good. Hey, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there, Bank Kilobyte. Appreciate the support. Let's have some hype in chat to welcome Ben to the Loyal Legion. Thank you, thank you. All right, picked up a land so we can Discovery or we can attack first since we're not blocking anyway. This Okapi is going to hit us pretty hard. So let's Surveil first. Don't need another cover-up. And then we'll Discovery. And we could draw into a Phantasm which we can play for one mana here. But we're mostly looking for mountains too. Alright, we'll keep the mountain. Don't want to be too picky. And we'll play it. Alright, so could still be in a bit of trouble here, but hopefully Crackling Drake stabilizes us. And then we've got a Commander Storm afterwards. Is this a uh, Sever Strands? Alright, we're pretty happy to see that. Maybe a bit premature on the opponent's part, but they could have another removal spell which would explain it. Definitely just gonna jam the Crackling Drake here. Opponent with just a Gender Stray, no fourth land, so they could still have Status Statue in hand. But then, of course, blocking with a Drake would still result in the Drake dying. But it would be a trade, so it would be a good uh, deal for us. So what's the play? Probably just Phantasm keep up Devious cover up after attacking. Right, pretty happy to block here. If our opponent says go with 4 mana up with a status statue, we would probably would have not cast a radical idea to keep up Devious Cover up. Uh, Veil Shade, we can command a storm, so I don't feel inclined to counter it. Would rather counter a removal spell. And then we'll draw some cards with radical idea here. And then we can jumpstart discarding island, so we have triple rat for niv -Mizzet. Halakite Whelp's not bad. And Invert Invent, which we can cast, so... Now the play is attack for four. Could play Halakite Whelp. Or we could just keep up cover-up and Invert Invent. And then go get our either Beacon Bolt or Duplicate. I think that's better. So we'll happily take some damage here. So the hope is they tap out for a creature. We get to invent, get a quasi duplicate plus something else. Perfect. So duplicate is a sorcery, and then for instance, I'm kind of thinking this Daneful Stroke is a cheap counter spell that we can keep up after we cast Quasi Duplicates. Alright, so let's Duplicate first, since then we can grow the Drake and only two creatures in Graveyard, so for single black there's nothing we have to be afraid of. Did not draw the island we were kind of hoping for, but Beacon Bolt's still excellent here. So that can just kill one of the opponent's creatures. Do we kill something now? 
Or do we keep up this Daneful Stroke? We could Beacon Bolt the Spider to prevent uh, Status from trading for the Drake, but that's a fine exchange. Probably keeping up this Daneful Stroke here, but we can attack first. Alright, looks like they do have Status. Or they're just Chum Blocking also works. Alright, let's keep up this Daneful Stroke. And our opponent should be dead next turn. Alright, sweet. Well, that was quite a beating. And we didn't even need niv Mizzet, Which is uh, quite a show of strength of the deck. So, a double Drakes, getting it done. This is probably gonna have to be a mulligan, sadly. I mean, it's still somewhat close given that we're on the draw. A single island lets us grab plus Capture Sphere, but we're pretty far away from casting a Niv-Mizzet, so... Let's go to 6. We'll keep this. Any land gives us the Mirror Informant, which helps us smooth out our draw. And what about a Phantasm? It is tempting since we have this Demir Informant. Do, of course, still need a third land. Yeah, let's stop it. Turn one islands. So they might be holding something. Opponent on is it? Alright, gonna need to hit that land drop. If we were up against like a Boros deck, then keeping Phantasm on top would have paid off. I guess it might still pay off if we draw the land. We do not. It's too bad. Alright, well, if we draw a land, we'll have a 3 3 Phantasm that can trade for the Dark Blade Agent. And hopefully, we get to Disdainful Stroke of 4 drop instead of opponent with a Thought Erasure, which not only takes away potentially the Demir Informant, but also lets them draw a card with agents. So things are not going well. Yeah, if there's no target for Dazzling Lights, I guess it doesn't pause, so it's probably Invert Invent that they have in hand. So we're gonna have to take it here, sadly. But we're in a pretty rough spot. Pass while adapts, and there's Niv Mizzet. Alright, well, we can start thinking about sideboarding now. Cyclops. Of course, her opponent now knows about uh, the Stainful Strokes, so they're not going to play into it. Don't have anything else going on. So had we bottomed the Phantasm, we would have drawn land turn sooner. And we would have still potentially gotten the Demir Informant taken away by the Thought Erasure. So we wouldn't necessarily have been in a better spot. And all right, they did have a Dazzling Lights. So still not sure if it would pause if there's no target for Dazzling Lights on turn 1, or if maybe our opponent's just on full control, or if they also have Invert Invent. Alright. So now we can capture Sphere, one of them. I think we want to keep up this Daneful Stroke for now, instead of Capture Sphering right away, and hope they don't have Instant Speed Surveil. And then we'll Capture Sphere end of turn, question is which one? The Cyclops or the Agent? Cyclops can hit us a bit harder, but might not always be able to attack. So I think that's kind of what we're hoping for here. They might counter it anyway. Alright, Sabotage, so as long as they can't attack with the Cyclops, we'll be okay. If they can attack with it, then we might be in trouble. So their opponent pretty deep into red as well. But they're based Demir, so either they're splashing for something like Hypothesis or Command Storm, or something else. Selective Snare, your own creature. So they're going to get to attack with the Cyclops no matter what. 
but we probably still want to counter it just to get to surveil so we can get a fifth land for command and sizzle. So let's counter it. They didn't know about the sabotage, so we're giving them a bit more info here. But I think it's okay just for the surveil here. Alright, that's not good enough. Yeah, we could have also countered the agent, that's true. Um, but they might not replay the agent right away, which would make it a little bit awkward holding a bunch of counter spells. Alright, did find a lance, so that's good. No need to do it right now, in case they are holding a counter spell. Oh yeah, they could have passed for selective snare, that's right. So they just hit us with the pass well, we'll take it. And then end of turn we'll hypothesis all on the Cyclops. Try and draw that third mountain for Niv. Um Hmm, what to discard? Might just be the Passwell Adept since they can make theirs unblockable anyway, so it's not like it's blocking if your opponent doesn't want to. So I could see that. Zap the Cyclops. Alright, Nightfell Sprites, not bad. We are down to 5, but niv can take over the game pretty quickly. Opponent probably has some removal in hand, so they might use it on the sprite. They don't know about niv in her hand. They do know about all the rest. So now we're going to force them to make it unblockable, spend 3 mana. But that's a 5 turn clock, so it's pretty slow. Alright, radical idea. So let's attack first. And then the question is, do we main phase the radical idea or not? If we main phase it, then we won't be able to cover up plus this Daneful Stroke. I think we'll just pass a turn here and then end of turn the radical idea twice. I guess Crackling Drake would be a reason, but we probably still want to keep up Devious cover up anyway. Alright, let's uh, radical idea. See what we draw. Islands. Uh, probably fine to discard that one to the jump start here. Alright, there we go. And another cover up. So this is gonna come down to the wire. And uh, might as well attack with the sprites. Island, so... I mean, we do have the option of Command a Storm on the Passwell Adept and then next turn play Niv with this Daneful Stroke backup. That might be worth it. It's not crazy, since dealing 3 damage to the Passwell Adept is not going to be easy, even with a Niv Mizzet in play. But again, no reason to... Play Commander Storm right now. Might as well do it in the opponent's turn after they attack. Alright, let's see if this works. It does. Alright. So they could follow up with uh, some creatures that don't get countered by Disdainful Stroke, like a Lee Guild Mage. Alright, I mean, it's go time. Do we attack with the sprite first? Probably. Since even if a sprite or if niv dies, we're only taking two from the guild mage, so we wouldn't be dead necessarily. So attacking with the sprite still seems okay. So what are we looking to draw here? A beacon bolt would be excellent. Uh, I guess a radical idea in the graveyard would be pretty nice too. Crackling Drake. We're not gonna turn down... So your opponent's splashing red for a guild mage, so that's good to know about.
So we are expecting that sniv is gonna pretty much die on site here. But we do have Disdainful Stroke to maybe counter a more expensive removal spell. Price of Fame. So we cancel counter this with Disdainful Stroke despite the cost reduction on the legendary creature here. So we'll deal one to the Guild Mage. Counter and kill Guild Mage. So that worked out. Alright. So we got our value from Niv, so even if he dies now, we'll be fine. Alright, deadly visits. Her opponent was just holding a bunch of removal. That's fine. Yeah, the converted mana cost of Price of Fame is still 4 despite the discount. Demir Informants. Alright. One card left in hand. Alright, so here we can go 8 mana total, so we can Crackling Drake keep up Devious Cover Up. Seems perfect. And then we're probably fine to attack with the Nightville Sprite still. 12 cards remaining, so still plenty of time to close out the game here. Do we want a mountain? Not really. Although I'm not sure what we're looking for at this point, we've got pretty much all the cards we want. Alright, we'll play the land, I think. Alright. Got a pretty fast clock here. Counterspell back up. <laughs> Quasi duplicate. Of course, the upside of duplicate is that we grow the Drake by one. Probably not too relevant. Let's play another Drake, see if they have a response. Alright, land. I could see keeping back the sprites. Just in case. Pass the turn. That's fine. No need to counter that one. Alright, if they tap out then it's fine. And then shuffle back. Command, Hypothesis, all Niv Mizzet, Disdainful Stroke, I guess. Take action. We did shrink down the Drakes a little bit, but that's okay. Guess we'll start with the duplicates. Can jump start it too. It's probably fine. All right, get in there. Opponent's forced to chum block. That's a fine draw. So we should have most things covered. I guess a splash the inescapable blaze kills us. Would be pretty unusual. All right, sweet. So against the mirror splashing for a Lee Guild Mage that we've seen so far, they've got a bunch of removal, that's fine. Could see adding a second copy of Invert Invent, but maybe we're slowing down the deck too much at that point. Yeah, I think we run it back and then kind of get to see more of the opponent's deck before we make any adjustments. Alright, how about this one? On the draw... It's not great, but probably still playable. Yeah, Goblin Electromancer would have made our deck significantly better. The mountain's a good draw. Oh, 
a look at us curving out. Don't think we're duplicating anything yet. Ooh, Midnight Reaper, that's a good one. Yeah, let's uh, keep up. Sinister Sabotage, nice pickup too, if we can convert it. Child of Night. Yeah, you know what? Kind of just want to hit our fourth land drop, and if it resolves, then it draws a card with the Reaper eventually. A locket's not bad, but not as good as a land. So do we keep it or not? I think we bottom it. Still happy to trade Phantasm for Reaper here. Even though we do have a crap coming up potentially. This seems like a totally fine trade. Perfect. Let's uh, play a crab now. Could keep up Devious Cover or Stroke for a potential turn 5 Watcher in the Mist, which could be somewhat problematic. So there's an argument for keeping up counter spells here. Yeah, it's probably better. Like, we've got most small creatures covered anyway, with the Passwall Adept. So it's probably safer to keep up uh, counter spells for now. It is a big commitment since imagine our opponent not doing anything here. Then uh, playing the crab could add up to quite a bit of damage. The problem, of course, is that if they take the cover up, it's not like we can disdainful stroke a two drop here. So we might as well hide the info by casting the cover up. Which is probably the card they're gonna take anyway. And then shuffle back sabotage. And lock it's actually not a bad draw here, so I'll put that back too. Don't think we want to Phantasm, because Locket ramps us while letting us keep up this Daneful Stroke here and ensures that we have double red or triple red for niv -Mizzet. I think we're still in favor of keeping up this Daneful Stroke for a turn or two before committing the Crab. Although now that we picked up Commander Storm, something like a Watcher in the Mist is less scary since we can potentially still kill it. But if we can deny the Surveil 2, that's still useful. Alright. Let's get in for one. So we're one land drop away from playing Crab and keeping up Disdainful Strokes, so I think we're patient. But you can imagine, had we just played the crab on turn 4, opponent would almost be dead by now. But sometimes in these blue matchups we gotta play it slow. Such is life. And now Radical Idea gives us something to 2 end of turn. Could cast it right now, since we would still keep up this Daneful Stroke. We also get to keep up Commander Storm this way. So my guess is our opponent's just holding a bunch of removal spells at this point. Like last time. Um, Don't really want an island in that we need double and triple red at some point. But it would let us crab plus this Dainful Stroke, so it's probably worth keeping. At which point I don't think we jumpstart. Alright, so now we can definitely discard an island. So we'll attack first. So if we don't have to disdainful stroke, we'll just jump start radical idea discarding island end of turn. That's quite a few mountains, and an erratic cyclops seems like a fine target. They could counter back here, but that's okay. Price of fame the crab. Yeah, I mean... Crab's pretty famous. Alright. So, now what? Can attack for one. And then... Do we jumpstart a radical idea, or do we discovery first? I think we discovery first.
and Mountain Crackling Drake, those are both excellent. Sadly, we can't cast a Crackling Drake right now since we're missing one mana. Which I think means we put the mountain on top, draw the mountain. If that way if they draw a discard effect, they can't take the Crackling Drake. And say go. Still interested in jumpstarting Radical at the end of turn here. Lee Guildmage, I guess we're just gonna zap. Alright, let's get in there. This Passful Adept has done 8 damage, <laughs> which is pretty impressive. Price of Fame, I think, was the only instant speed removal spell we've seen in the previous game. We saw Deadly Visit as well as Sorcery Speed Removal. So it's still a bit risky to duplicate the Drake here, but could be worth it if they're holding a Deadly Visit. So I think I'm gonna go for it. Alright, that worked out. And the Night Veil Sprite is good too. Fine to play out the third mountain for Niv. Alright, GG's. Alright, nice. So far so good. Um, pretty similar hand to last time, except that we have a Niv with no red mana. This is close. I uh, do get to play a turn to adapt. If we really are desperate, we can duplicate it if we draw any land. And we've got Sabotage on three. So this one's close. Of course, we're pretty far away from casting Niv Mizzet anytime soon, but kind of evaluate this as a six card hand without a scry with the bonus of Niv Mizzet. Somewhere in the future. All right, we'll keep. Poland had a slight pause with single green up. Could be status from status statue. What else could it be? Uh, Might of the masses could be it, yeah. Harpooner were happy to trade for the phantasm. Well, we've been here before. Let's see if we can draw our way out of this. Alright, we've got our uh, two copies of Devious Cover-Up. If we have to start discarding to hand size, what do we discard? Beacon Bolts or Duplicates would be my first guess. Hey, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. Silhouette, welcome to the Loyal Legion. Appreciate the support. Yeah, this is awkward. Yeah, we could attack with the Passwall Adapt, I guess. There's no real downside. Except I'm killing the Phantasm, I guess, then we would regret attacking. Alright, so... Get to invert the Adapts. And let it trade for a Harpooner. Seems fine. So we'll uh, switch this, and I guess this doesn't really matter. Beetle puts counter on Crawl Swarm. So now the Crawl Swarm's out of Beacon Bolt range if we were to top deck a Mountain Island instead. Alright, let's hope to sabotage something, find a mountain, and then beacon bolt uh, cross swarm. Find targets. Come on, mountain. Hmm, this is what I was afraid of. Do we keep island? I don't think that's good enough. Sure, we get to play crab, but the cross swarm's gonna beat us to death. 
desperate times. So this is where they might use a status from status statue to trade, but we're happy with that. Nope. All right, that's a weird attack then. They maybe just want to power up uh, undergrowth, could be. All right, did not find the mountain. I guess we'll play a Cyclops. Yeah, it could also be Might of Masses still. Sad of Statue, Might of Masses, single green would make sense. So Might of Masses could put the Crawl Swarm out of range from our Beacon Bolt, since we only have two instants or sorceries in our graveyard. Rhizome Lurcher. But I guess Status Statue would also do it. Alright, I mean, that keeps us alive for a turn. Another Lurcher. So this explains why they were happy to throw away the Iron Shell Beetle. Alright, I don't think we have outs. A radical idea into nothing. I guess we'll keep up appearances. But I also don't want to discard to hand size and show them more stuff. I guess we're still at 7 cards, so it's fine. Maybe they show us an extra card, we'll see. Alright, that's a good one to know about, so thanks for showing. And they're not even killing us here, so <laughs> that was a weird finality, if I've ever seen one. Alright, there's a land and a mountain, but yeah, still pretty far away from uh, coming back here. Alright, let's concede. So, moving into game two, what don't we like, what do we like? Sonic Assault could be okay at kind of tapping down their stuff for a turn, but we're not the most aggressive deck, so we can't really take full advantage of Sonic Assault. Passwall Adapt doesn't seem great, their stuff is pretty big, but it can block an early 2-2 Beetle, for example. Finality in the face of our Crackling Drakes could be somewhat painful, but we've got quite a few counter spells. Alright, let's try this. Alright, got another one of those catchy keeps, but this time we have a Locket and a Cyclops we can cast. So we'll keep and just hope to draw an island this time. Let's attack here. No reason not to. And then we'll probably play the locket so we can ensure Crackling Drake next turn. And then we start growing the Crackling Drake to get past the Sunju at some point. So we've got our defenses up, and the nice thing about Crackling Drake for the time being is that it blocks without killing the opponent's stuff, so we won't trigger their undergrowth stuff. Veiled Shade we might have to kill eventually, but we might be able to snipe it with the Beacon Bolt. And Discovery Dispersal is not bad here. So we've got 5 mana total. Kind of like getting the Piston Fist in play, and then we can also Discovery. So we'll, let's discovery first. Two lands. Probably fine to bottom both since we're likely to draw more lands anyway. I 
Giant Capture Sphere could be useful too. A removal spell that doesn't put their creature in the graveyard. So not attacking with a Crackling Drake here. Just play a Cyclops. And say go. So next turn we have a few options. We could Radical Idea plus Beacon Bolt the Shade if they're tapped out. Beetle with a counter on the Sunju. Could also just command the storm the Sunju if we're really worried about it. it. Does make sense from their perspective since now they can block the Cyclops a bit better. Could develop the Night Veil Sprite and then end of turn Radical Idea. So that seems okay. I don't think we want to be killing the opponent's stuff at this point. When they're probably holding a bunch of Rhizome Lurchers, which right now don't do anything. But if we start killing their stuff, they actually become real threats. Ocran Assassin, that's a nice target for Beacon Bolt. Yeah, Sunju is also out of range from Find Finality, so that could also be a card they're holding. But yeah, let's just Radical Idea here. Phantasm, pretty good here in combination with the Nightville Sprite. So I think the plan is Beacon Bolt Assassin. And then we could either make the Piston Fist unblockable. Yeah, but we probably just want to play the Phantasm here. So I think the plan is play Phantasm, Beacon Bolt Assassin. All right, let's play Phantasm. Attack with Sprite and Drake. Mountain can go. And we'll Beacon Bolt. I mean, we could also decide not to kill the Assassin. But right now Beacon Bolt only does two, so it's not enough to actually kill the Sunju. So we'll kill the Assassin here, since that could potentially be a scary card. And kind of want to grow the Phantasm out of Find Finality range if we can help it. Not jump starting right now, since all our cards are good. So yeah, we could still kill the Sanju if we want to. Open up a nice attack with the Crackling Drake and the Sprites. And I guess the Cyclops while we're at it. Could also capture Sphere it. So it doesn't end up in the graveyard, but I would rather save the Capture Sphere for a big Rhizome Lurcher. So yeah, let's command. Grow a Crackling Drake. Get in there. And we're fine if they want to trade for the Veiled Shade here. Alright, that's a good one. I think we'll keep that on top this time. Happy casting it twice on the Crackling Drake. So we're slowly getting the Phantasm out of Find Finality range. Put Veil Shade first. Force them to pump. I guess it, we're not forcing them to pump here, but this makes sense since now we get to kill the Beetle and the Shade. Opponents finally got 4 mana, there's a Rhizome Lurcher, which we were kind of expecting, which is why our opponent was happy to trade. But we've got plenty of answers at the ready. So let's make some drakes. Alright, Radical Idea, can discard that to jumpstart. And our opponent at 4 mana, we're not afraid of Find Finality yet. So let's copy it once again. Discard Radical Idea. Grow the Drake one more. And get in there. So our opponent is pretty dead here. So did we see anything that makes us uh, change our minds on anything? I think we're happy with our current configuration. This is keepable thanks to Discovery. Turn 
turn one vine, sure. So turn to discovery, looking for mountains, and then we've got counter spells for days. Opponent stock on one land. Uh, don't think we want to phantasm this time around. Perfect. Mm, grappling Sunju. Don't think we care about that. Doesn't kill us. Alright, I mean, the crab is also not doing much here, but might as well. So they're likely to sag the vine here. For now we can just say go. They're not sacking the vine. It does cost two mana, right? That's pretty greedy. Stuck on two lands, doesn't want to cycle the vine just to keep a, an O3 blocker. They're gonna have to start discarding to hand size. I guess that's one way of uh, powering up undergrowth. All right, let's uh, run it back. But now we can invent end of turn and get either beacon bolt or duplicates and I guess another a devious cover up or something. So I've got counter spells for days. Just need to draw a crackling drake at some point. Or a Niv Mizzet. We could also invert both walls. I guess that's also a play we could make. But is it better than getting a, a duplicate? I guess it's a sweeter play, but then we probably should have done it a while ago feels a bit silly to waste invert to kill walls when we don't care about those walls. So I think we'll just invent here. All right, we'll get duplicates and radical idea, I guess, since we've got counter spells anyway. Help us find those win conditions. All right, there we go. Let's keep attacking. Play a Drake, still have this Daneful Stroke at the ready. And now we've got Sabotage too. So now they're gonna die very quickly. Crawl Swarm, how do we deal with that one? Probably this Daneful Stroke. So we're definitely duplicating the drake, so we can start there. Not bad. So now we can go ahead and play a land and say go. Keep up our counter spells. Don't think we need to duplicate again. Find finality is kind of the card we need to keep in mind the most. So definitely want to make sure we keep up a counterspell for that one. Ocarina Assassin, that's fine. Our creatures are going to be tapped anyway for the most part. Alright, let's cast another one I guess. Oh, I forgot this guy doesn't have uh, reach. So yeah, I guess we can just go for lethal here. Command a storm, the grappling Sunju, attack with everyone. All right. I 
that works too. Alright, so we're doing pretty well here. 3 0. And we've only needed Niv Mizzets once or twice so far. Alright, the sand seems good. I guess we leaked a bit of information there. Let's keep that duplicate for something more relevant. Happy to just stay back for now. Counter anything that gets past or past well adept. That's fine. Could have countered it still, but I think we'll be a bit more patient here. So what are we hoping to draw here? Crackling Drakes would be pretty high up on our list. Bartos and Bats, probably worthy of a sabotage here. Devious cover-up, it is tempting, stops the opponent next relevant play. And right now we're only taking one a turn, so that's probably fine. And eventually draw something that uh, prevents them from attacking. No attacks with the Generous Tray and Beetle, they could have gotten in one damage potentially. Alright, put on Splashing White, maybe explains the uh, double mulligan. Hunted Witness, weird. So they're Celestia Splashing Black then, for Bartos and Bats. Or they're just uh, three color. Either way, that's fine. Alright, let's just uh, take a draw step, another Devious cover up. I mean, it's not like they can do a ton of damage now, since we can just block the Witness twice and then. It's gone, but could be in a bit of trouble here if they start double spelling us and we don't draw lands. Or crackling drakes. Or blockers in general. Got a few decent draws here. Cyclops, Demir Informant, Crackling Drake times two. Lands would be fine. Alright. Let's block the witness. Serpent essentially gets in six damage here. Which is not bad considering they just paid one mana for it. Alright, Demir Informant's good. Um, probably worth tapping out for find a fifth land, plus we have Capture, Fear and Commando Storm in case they do resolve a big creature. Hopefully it's not a creature we can't answer, but usually it is. Alright, both lands are good. Question is, do we keep both of them or do we keep one of them? Once we get up to six mana for Invent, we can get Beacon Bolt plus Radical Idea, so I think we do keep both. And Mountain First is fine. So here we could invert to give the Mirror Important 4 power, but then our opponent's just not going to do the fight. So I think this is fine. Keep the Invert Invent for the Invent half. So we'll need to spend a turn killing the Indric with either Command Storm or Capture Sphere. And uh, probably want to keep up our counter spells here, even though there's a chance our opponent has a pump spell to save the Indric. In case they main phase something scary we need to counter. Just block the beetle, and then could take 4 to keep up counter spells and then end of turn it. We're at 16, so taking 4, probably still reasonable. L gives us the luxury of keeping up counter spells and then end of turn kill the Indric. Taking 4 might seem a bit much, but it's the safest play here we can make. Alright, end of turn will command the Indric. That works. 
untap, play land, say go. Got our counter spells at the ready. If not, we'll just invent end of turn, getting Beacon Bolt and Radical Idea, I think. Uh, is there anything else we want? So Sorcery, I think Beacon Bolt makes sense. And then Instant, it's either Radical Idea, Stroke. I mean, we've got a few options, for instance. But I kind of like Radical Idea, since if we're doing this draw-go thing, we can draw some cards end of turn and hopefully find a Crackling Drake soon. Yeah. And then we can probably afford to Beacon Bolt the Beetle here, even though it's a bit of overkill. Just to get it out of the way. So we don't bleed our life total here. Alright, so now we're not taking any damage, still have our Counterspell up. Can Radical ID end of turn. Hypothesis all would be fine too, but it's a bit clunkier to cycle here. Uh, sure. Well, opponent's been sandbagging some stuff for a while here, not sure what. Alright, Disdainful Stroke's good too. Is it Locket? So, probably just Beacon Bolting the token for three, and that's all we can do now. And then discard probably the Locket. Could also discard the duplicates, but... Alright, just waiting to find an actual creature that blocks well here. Two Crackling Drakes and if Mizzets. Opponent could also be holding on to some removal spells that they haven't wanted to use yet. Don't really want to discard anything to the Radical Idea at this point. Alright, that's a good one. They still get the trigger, but only for four, so they're unlikely to find anything relevant. And then I'm happy to cover up here, I think. Use a more expensive counter spell, shuffle back. Command, Sabotage, Invert Invent, and Informant wouldn't be a terrible draw here, so put that back too. Take action. And what do they hit? Nothing. This is a scary card though, so I definitely want to keep our counter spells for Elemental. So good to know about. Alright, redraw Invert Invent. So this game is dragging on, just because we're failing to draw a win condition. Conclave Cavalier, so... So far they look more like Celestia Splash Black. Definitely want to deal with the Cavalier, question is how. Disdainful Stroke could work, Capture Sphere could work, Devious Cover-Up could work. I guess we can let that resolve and then Capture Sphere it. Would be a bit awkward, I guess, if they have a Sever Strands, because then they still get the tokens. But that does mean we get to invent end of turn here. And let's get probably Sizzle. And this is our sorcery. Alright, so let's uh, discover, I guess. Keep up triple red in case we draw Niv Mizzet, although I doubt we would play it right now. So maybe it's better to actually tap a red. Probably don't need the command of storm. Could keep the informants. Extra blocker helps us surveil, but we're probably better off just putting that in the graveyard too at this point. This has been a weird game. All right, there we go. Cyclops does something at least. So now we can capture Sphere plus a Zainful Stroke. It's 
So we're still putting the opponent on having maybe a removal spell or two in hand. Hopefully no Sever Strands. Alright, there we go. Well, let's play Niv, keep up stroke, seems good. Do have to be a little bit careful to not deck ourselves with Niv. But uh, with another Devious Cover-Up to shuffle back Devious Cover-Up, we should be okay. So step one, they need to deal with Niv. Crawl Harpooner, that's a pretty nice answer. Um, but we can Radical Idea and Response. Discard. Let's discard Cyclops. So we are tapped out of our counterspell. Crushing Canopy, I'll take it. Can finish off the beetle, I guess. So Niv drew some extra cards. Opponent's got two cards left. And now we can hopefully kill them quickly with the Crackling Drake. Can shuffle Niv back with our Devious Cover up too, so... I'm not too concerned here. All right. Do they have a second one of those, or did they shuffle their deck somehow when they cast a spider? Since they do go to the bottom in a random order, I don't think they shuffled their deck, so they have two of those. That's important to know for the next game. Let's just uh, disdainful stroke that one for now. All right, and our opponent has seen enough. Well, we're definitely happy with all the counter spells against uh, our opponent's deck. Anything else we're interested in? They did have main deck crushing canopy, so they're definitely prepared to deal with our flyers. Crawl harpoon or two we'll have to keep in mind. Not much we can do about it other than play carefully. Turn to Nightfill Sprite into Harpooner could also be painful. So we'll have to keep that in mind too. All right, let's run it back. All right, this hand's okay if they don't crawl Harpooner us. But they're on the play, so they might run out the Harpooner on turn two. Would still be annoying, but at least we wouldn't lose our sprite. All right, it's gonna be a beetle first. If they had Harpooner, would they have played it on turn two? Not necessarily, but don't think we play around it. They're not playing it right away, so I have to imagine they don't have the Harpooner. Alright, we get to on top, that's good. Let's get in for one, play Informant. Well, they gave us a free Surveil here, seems like a mistake. But we don't care about the uh, Sprite too much. Would rather keep Sabotage for one of their scarier creatures. Discovery Dispersal. Don't think we need Discovery Dispersal. We'll get to see a lot of cards. Alright, Niv we probably want to keep, but we're pretty far away from casting it as a problem. But I have faith. So we'll probably do it like this. Somewhat greedy to keep Niv on top, but eh, what's life without Niv Mizzet? Pretty sad if you ask me. Guild Mage is uh, somewhat scary. So do want to make sure we find our lands for Hypothesis all in time. Probably just playing a crab here instead of keeping up Sabotage. Their scarier cards were not necessarily at 5 mana. 
they came a bit later. And Elemental I think is 9 mana total with Convoke. So even if they play land, they would only be at 7 with Convoke. So I think we're fine to play Crab. Get our defenses up. Maybe make them use a removal spell on it, which is fine. And ideally we draw land so we can have access to Apothesis on next turn. Alright, Cyclops. I think we want to keep up our instance now. And then we can Radical Idea if they don't make us do anything. And hopefully draw some mountains in time. So opponent can activate the Guild Mage now, which is not great for us. But hopefully they don't get to activate it too much. Alright, Crackling Drake. I think we're discarding Cyclops. Alright, more Radical Ideas. Seems to be a trend. And Mountain. Alright. Opponent gets to make a token with the Guild Mage. We're not going to Hypothesis on response since we want to keep up Sabotage. And then end of turn we'll sizzle the Guild Mage. Sure, they might be able to make another token, which is too bad, but... Such is life. And then next turn we get to maybe deploy a Drake, we'll see. Alright, let's uh, sizzle this Guild Mage. Opponent definitely played it well here to play around our counter spells, just activate the guild mage a bunch of times, get their value. But we're also getting our value with radical idea. Alright, so they are tapped out. And the pass will adapt. So we could tap out for Niv. How does Niv match up if your opponent taps out for their Hexproof Elemental? Uh, does get pretty interesting. Could avoid that situation by being a bit more patient. Since next turn we get to play Crackling Drake and keep up Sinister Sabotage. Um, what happens if they have a Crawl Harpooner? Only one creature in the graveyard. Alright, sure, why not. So we're expecting them to play their big Hexproof dude here. But I think we can beat it, which is why we went with Niv. Next turn we get to Crackling Drake plus Sabotage to maybe get another big guy. Alright, Color the Culprit, that's fine. So they're not convoking their big guy here and we got our value. And it was going to take us a while before we could keep up Counterspell alongside Niv. So let's shoot one in their face. And a Recluse, that's fine too. Alright. So now we're on the Drake plus Counterspell plan. And hopefully draw into more Counterspells soon, since we only have the one right now. Sir so opponent already played their Crushing Canopy and their Collar. What else did we see in terms of removal? The Crawl Harpooner could kill the Drake. Don't know if we saw much else. That one we're fine to counter. Alright, we're kind of desperate here since we're not drawing too well. Let's, uh, I guess we don't need triple red anymore. Let's jumpstart this Radical Idea, hope to find some action. But we could be in trouble now. Alright, Command Storm's not bad. Problem, of course, is that we don't have any counter spells. Do still have three in our deck. Can get in for five with our Drake. Passwall Adept is potentially going to help us race, so that is good. Think we want to keep up Command Storm in case of Crawl Harpooner. So we'll just play the Phantasm, say go, and then next turn we can maybe start making stuff unblockable to try and race. Dowser of Lights is fine. Probably still want to kill it in case they start going wide. Alright, Luminous Bonds is too bad. So now we don't care about Crawl Harpooner anymore. So Command Storm's a fine play on the Dowser. Didn't see anything too scary in the first game that we would need to save the Command Storm for. 
All right, now we just need to draw Sinister Sabotage to shuffle back Niv into our deck or draw our other Crackling Drake. I guess uh, Quasi Duplicate on Drake would also work. So we've got some good draws here. I guess we'll keep a land in hand for Jumpstart, even though I guess we've cast most of our Jumpstart cards. Still have a duplicate in our deck. Could make an attack here, don't know if it's worth it. Only have four creatures on defense right now. We're not hitting for much, so probably fine to pass a turn. And hope to top deck better than our opponent. We did pick up Disdainful Stroke so we can counter the first hexproof creature they play. Alright. Definitely cashing this in. Um, I guess there's no 2-drop we want to play right now, so we might as well keep up the facade. I think we've played all the 2-drops we care about. So there's nothing we can draw into that we would want to play right now. So let's just pass a turn. Alright, hopefully they didn't draw a second one, otherwise we would be in trouble. But this locket is probably going to draw us into some goodies. Would be funny if uh, our opponent just never casts a spell into our counter spell. So we don't get the opportunity to shuffle back cards. But we could always counter our own spells to get the shuffle 4 effect. Alright, Crackling Drake, good draw. Draws us into Invert Invents which can maybe help us find some more stuff next turn. No need to Beacon Bolt anything. We are down to 8 cards, but two of them are Devious Cover-Up. One of them is Quasi Duplicates. Alright, that's unfortunate. I mean, we still have the Crackling Drake underneath the Luminous Bond, so I guess we'll be fine. And this is a trade. I guess we can Invert in Vance. I mean invert, but then they just don't fight. Like, I guess it's still better to invent next turn for duplicates, cast a duplicate, because then we can jumpstart it an additional time. So this is probably fine. If we didn't have the Drake with the Luminous Bonds, it would be a different story. Alright, let's invent. Make sure we keep a blue mana. Can only cast it once here. But that's good enough. And then we can get our cover up so there's nothing else in our deck besides the Capture Sphere. I guess we could play it extra safe now. Hmm. Nah. I think we can outrace whatever they play now. So we'll be okay. Alright, four cards remaining. But with the Devious cover-up, we should be okay. Alright, nothing. Another Devious cover-up. So at some point, we might have to counter our own spell. Just to get the shuffle effect from cover-up so we don't deck ourselves. Could make Crackling Drake unblockable, which is a two-turn clock. That's probably fine, since they have the Recluse on defense. Could also Beacon Bolt the Recluse, but we might want to keep the Beacon Bolt as a spell we counter with the cover-up. So we can shuffle. Alright, let's just pass a turn. Opponent already casts one Crushing Canopy. Don't know if they have a second one, but if they do, we have cover up at the ready. So they're pretty dead here. Unless they can kill the Drake twice. Probably should have played our land there, no reason not to. So we would have had double cover up up, funny to say. Alright. Well, this was an interesting game. Sweet. All right. So we're four and zero. Let's see if we can get the last one. 
and seems good. Oh yeah, the crab was pretty good that game. Helped us uh, hold the fort nicely. Another Golgari deck. I think that's an okay matchup for us so far. Wonder if uh, we have a good matchup against a Boros deck. I could see that being a bad matchup for us since we're kind of slow. I guess we'll attack first. Hmm. Two five drops. I mean, they're kind of good, but... We also need to draw lands before we draw those. So I could see splitting the difference here. Keep one of them. Ditch the other. I think we'll keep the sizzle. We already have Invent that can find us two cards, so our late game's looking good. Just want to make sure we don't uh, miss any land drops. Alright. Informant helps there too. Opponent with a white splash, perhaps. So another ops on deck. Could keep up with the Zainful Stroke, but I think we want Informant just to try and find lands. Or a Niv -Mizzets. I guess Locket into Niv kind of works. Sure. So next turn we get to Locket plus the Zainful Stroke. We could even deal 7 damage here if we invert, but probably not necessary. So we'll draw the locket, keep up stroke, turn after, draw Niv. Wouldn't be able to cast it yet, but we can sizzle and probably find the lands for Niv. Alright, I guess our opponent's going real deep. Maybe on a gates deck. Fair enough. So let's lock it. I don't think we attack for one. Don't want to trade one damage for two damage. Five mana, no blue. Garrison Sergeant is a fine counter target for the stroke. We know what they're up to. End of turn, we'll probably sizzle. Alright, that's a fine target. Discard Cyclops, kill patrol. And hope to draw land here. Alright, perfect. All right, Witch Shaper, that's good. So Niv might be safe this turn, and then we get to protect him with cover up. All right, GG's. Locket plus Niv is also kind of sweet since we get to draw two and deal two damage somewhere, but no need for it here. Just play it safe. Molder Hulk can capture Spirit, keep cover up for removal on Niv. So let's uh, invent. Can we kill our opponent here? Maybe. Alright, opponent's just gonna concede. They could have waited to get more info, but yeah, they were super dead there. Alright, so I guess the gate deck. So they're kind of slow out of the gates, but then they've got a powerful late game, which our deck matches up well against, thanks to our counter spells. Don't think we want to go as high as add a second invert invent. Hellkite Welp doesn't seem necessary. Sonic Assault doesn't seem needed. I think we're good to go. Our deck hasn't failed us yet. This is a... Uh, a strong hand if we draw lands, but I don't want to gamble on that. 
So let's go to six and be adults about it. Alright, this is better. And cover up, don't have double blue yet, so I have a hard time imagining keeping that one. Alright, lift the draw. It's gonna take a while to get to it, but it's a good long term plan. Ooh, turn to Dawn of Hope. So your opponent's got their late game plan. Nightville Sprite, a nice pickup. Alright, let's get in. We'll keep that. So we can uh, Discovery, draw the islands, play the islands, seems fine. And do we want both islands? I think we'll split the difference here, don't want to flood out. Although we do want to draw a th triple island at some point for Niv. Don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. We've got the sprite, hopefully, for another couple turns to help us improve our draw steps anyway. Alright, that's fine. So our opponent pretty likely to have a... the equipment, a glaive that gives plus one plus one for each gate, but this time they're on a gateless draw. Either way, let's attack for one with the sprites. Informant's not bad. Does block the Okapi pretty well is the upside. So we probably want to keep that. So we don't have to waste the Capture Sphere here. And then we can just Radical Idea twice. Don't really want to duplicate the uh, Sprite. Want to keep it for something beefier. And we keep up for mana, so our opponent might play around a Counterspell. Which is where these radical ideas come in handy. So we've got the perfect mana for Niv next turn. And we can play Informant in the meantime. Still fine to attack with the sprites. But I'm probably going to make a Dawn of Hope token end of turn. Sizzle's good, don't need islands. Alright. So everything is ready for Niv's grand entrance, and hopefully he sticks around for a while. Not too much removal our opponent could have here in green whites. I think we preserve our life total instead of killing the token. Alright, opponent's got black mana now. So now they could have more answers, but we still jam here. Could also see staying back with the sprite now, since if Nif survives we win the game anyway. And if they kill them, then we might want the sprite back to block the token. Yeah, on the other hand, we do want to kind of find our next threat in case they do deal with Nif. So I think we still attack. Alright, that's good. So please don't kill Niv. If it's something like a Luminous Bonds, that's fine, since we still get the effect from Niv. So it would have to be something that actually kills it. Alright, Luminous Bonds is fine. So we'll block here still. And Niv can shoot down the token.
Could also quasi duplicate NIV if we want to, and then keep the non-luminous bonded NIV. Yeah, why not? And we'll deal one damage here, I guess. And then we can radical idea. We'll keep the token. And then the radical idea. Discard land. Uh, actually, should attack first with a sprite. Improve our draw step. I mean, can get better than a crab. There's a Crackling Drake, so now we're fully going off. Keep up Radical at the instant speed here. They gotta kill Niv again. That's fine. Can capture Spirits. So I don't think we end of turn jumpstart to Radical Idea. All our cards are pretty good. Kill the Generous Tray, I guess. Since we get to draw with the Crackling Drake. Stroke is a good draw too. Could duplicate the Drake. Could also keep up Disdainful Stroke. Eh, it's probably safer, to be honest. Alright, eh, sure. We'll keep up Disdainful Stroke. Can just chump the Cavalier with our Informant here to play it extra safe. District Guide can find their missing caller, perhaps. So they've got a Garrison Sergeant, so we're gonna counter it and then they're dead. We'll see. Alright, sweet. Well, we got the clean 5-0, just one game dropped. Alright. Alright, if this is a pack one, pick one... Yeah, probably could have concoct. And uh, this is tempting. Lockstone's definitely powerful rare and would still fit in a an aggressive Boros deck, so probably worth taking here, even though I'm kind of leaning towards taking blue cards in general. Alright, easy duplicates. Uh, this one's close. Emara's quite strong if you can play her early. Lee Guildmage is also very strong, so I guess it depends on your color preference. I might lean towards Lee Guildmage, but if unchecked, Amara can definitely be more powerful. Got a few good options, Luminous Bonds, Assure Sample, Nightville Sprite. Also comes down to color preference, so if you like blue, you can take a Sprite, if you like Selesnya can take a sure symbol. If you like Boros, can take a Luminous Bonds. And I would take the Beast Whisper here, even though it's a green card, just because the payoff is definitely there. So either works out nicely in a Golgari or Selesnya deck. We Dragonaut's strong too, so if you really like Izzet, you could take it, but I think Beast Whisper is good enough that it warrants a pick here, despite being a green card. Alright. I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.